So he's doing the second practice session for the 100th Loudon Classic. That's Shane Narbonne, number 64. Stefano Mesa, number 37. He's up from Florida. Uh, superstar Moto America rider, obviously. Who's this guy over here? Oh yeah, so we got John Grush, uh, series uh, CEO, <laughs> president. He's very much hard at work here. Yes, yes, hard at He's work. Not sitting, sitting in the ivory tower. He's the one, really, you know, fully responsible, putting this event together. Amazing, two hundred and fifty thousand dollar purse for the one hundred loud who's, classic. Who's we got Eric Wood, number five. Eric Wood runs the Penguin School. And now we got the M4 Vision Suzuki team. M2 Yamaha. Four Josh Hayes. 99 PJ Jacobson. Number 70 T Cobbs. 54. Yeah. Who's the, who are these guys rolling up here? Uh, so we got uh, Team M4 Vision Suzuki, their crew rolling out. Uh, Warhorse Ducati. So these are the factory guys you normally don't yeah, get out of the class. Factory Moto America teams here. They're here to win some money, get the heck out of here, and they're shooting out to Washington State next to race at the Ridge, which I believe is next weekend. Yeah, they're going to. Uh, Quick turnaround. Quick race turnaround. to race. <laughs> This is going to be number five, Eric Wood. In the lead, that's Josh Hayes, number four. Followed by Tyler Scott. Tyler Sweeney. How fast are they going down this straightaway right here? Uh, these are 600cc motorcycles, some 750s, but you're going to see top speeds of 150 to Holy 160 shit. mile an hour. <laughs> They're going 160 right here. Oh, easy. <laughs> Stefano Mesa, number 37. So if you're driving down the highway 60 miles an hour, they'd be passing you 100 miles an hour faster like you're standing still. Rip the paint off yep. your car. <laughs> Shane Narbonne, number 64. He's run this race a bunch of times. I think we're coming up on 10. I believe he's leading qualifying with the fastest time of a 10.7. All minute, that, minute 10.7. All that hard work's gonna, about to pay off, literally. Yeah. Again, Eric Wood on the gas. Desmo Maniacs, number five. Josh Hayes again. So, Rick, this is for pole position, right? This is qualifying yep, test? Yep. That looked like Tyler Sweeney in that pass by, getting a good toe off of Josh Hayes. They are absolutely ripping. Shane Narbonne on the gas again. <laughs> That's the beginning. Tyler Scott with a 110.6. PJ Jacobson with a 10.8. We got a lot of guys in the 11s right now. They're pretty closely matched, huh? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of fast guys here today. And unfortunately, it is starting to spit a little bit of rain. What's going on over here? We got PJ Jacobson, number 99, on the Warhorse Ducati. Looks like their end could be a rear tire change. I'm not sure. Looks like they're about to spin that rear wheel off. Would they be trying different combos uh, based on track conditions, or is this an issue with the bike? No, this is just going to be possibly try a different compound, or he's already worn that one out, and he's just going to something fresh to finish this session out, try to shoot again for one more fast lap. Will they change tires in the main event tomorrow? No, I don't believe there is any tire changes uh, allowed. you got to finish what you started on. Back out of 
fresh set of tires. Yep. How soon can they go race speed at, once they go out on a, on a fresh set? Can they go race speed immediately or do they got to get them warmed up? So those tires are sitting there waiting for that bike on tire warmers already. So they're preheated, ready to race. So, so they can go full speed. You got it. <laughs> once they're fresh off the warmers right into the first corner, you know, you, you may go a little easy for a turn or two, half a lap, but they're ready to go off the warmers. moving and that's why I don't walk to walk across the track guys that's why they call it a hot pit Rick, what does that backfiring sound at the end of the straightaway on the four cylinders? So that's basically how the bikes sound on the diesel, and that can also be part of the engine braking, adding a little bit of throttle on the diesel to match the speed of the rear tire with the pavement as you're slowing down into the corner. Sounds wicked. Rick, how many horsepower are these 600s putting down? A good 600 these days is 140 to 150 horsepower. That's absolutely insane. Depending on who you ask. <laughs> but yeah, wow. a good guy, you know, these guys out here today, they're all 135, 145 horsepower. What was that? See him stick his leg up? Yeah. That's just basically a sign that he's going to pull over to the side. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the don't run me over leg. Yeah. <laughs> What's the top speed of the uh, in this class? Okay, so in this class out here, you're probably 150, 155 mile an hour. And, and they're doing that merely feet away from each other uh, at 150 miles an hour. Yes. Yes. A lot of drafting going All on. All funneling into a very tight spot at the end of the straightaway to turn hard left. <laughs> Across these, you know, cracks and seams. You had mentioned earlier this track is uh, has a pretty rough surface. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but there are there are actual cracks in the track that are like an inch wide, right? Yeah. And Very. This is an accurate representation of some of the spots on the track. Yeah. So when you hit that some big seams, when you hit that sideways at 120 miles an hour. So at high speed coming down the straightaway, when you hit the little bumps, did, did you feel it or is it float yes. over it? Yes. Yeah. You, you feel every crack and every bump on this track. <laughs> That's the older you get. Man, I love that sound. These bikes sound wicked. Yeah. The uh, the tw the twins, are the the Ducati sound amazing too. So what's going on? Uh, to describe this team right here. This is another factory team, right? Yeah, yeah. This is the Suzuki M4 Vision. Looking at Tyler Scott or Richie Escalante, who just pulled in. They're taking a look at that rear tire. Possibly going to change. Nope. Heading back out. Oh, hell yeah. That was sick. That's a 600? Yes. I think he's got Actually, that's balls. a 750. Oh, 750. Yep. Now, how do they run the 750 in a 600 class? Ah, uh, tough one to describe. <laughs> So basically, they're controlling the throttle. So the throttle is only allowed to open so far in the 750. They'd be cutting off the last 8% of it. Don't quote me on all this. I'm, I'm, I'm semi-close. You also have the bigger Ducati that runs in this class. So we've kind of taken the 600 class and made it so some next-gen bikes can race. Very cool. Basically trying to get some more people on the grid. merely inches away from that wall at 150 miles an hour that at, on a rough track that's pretty pretty amazing there's a lot of walls around here what, are the, what is that wall made out of Rick so what you're looking at here is a concrete wall and that we have right here is called the safer barrier this is something that NASCAR uses yep so a car can get into this and it's like you know uh, take up the shock in here before you get to the concrete and it's the same thing on the outside. 
So basically a safer barrier and a concrete wall. So theoretically this will absorb some if they happen to slide off yep. into it. And if you look down that way, you can see the fencing that comes off the wall. They call that air fence. Air fence. So it's like a big air mattress that is blown up and stuck to the wall. So in case you do get in there, you're going into a big puffy cloud of air instead of a hard concrete wall. Have you ever hit one yourself? I have. They 100% they save lives, and that's what the Road Racing World Action Fund is all about. It's one of John Elrich's efforts uh, to basically raise awareness for it and raise money, and he supplies air fences to tracks all around the country, wow. which saves riders' lives. That's a Road Racing World Action Fund. Wow. So again, PJ Jacobson, number 99. Is that a war horse, Ducati? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, V2 Ducati. We're basically, we're almost at the end of this session. He's about to throw a checkered flag on this one. They're going to post the lap times over here. So we'll know who's, uh, well, we know who has the pole after this session. Yeah. Someone could have gone faster in the first session, though. Oh, okay. So, you know, they'll compare the two sessions, and that's how they'll, I believe that's how we're going to grid for tomorrow. I'm not quite sure if there's some more qualifying in the morning, or, our, this our, may have been the first cut. When it's cooler, and it, Rick, are the lap times faster when it's a little cooler? Like it's later in the afternoon, it feels about 10 degrees cooler than it was earlier today. Would they be faster now with the, the air temp? A little bit slower. <laughs> slower? The bikes, the bikes get a little faster because of cooler air. And the pavement gets a little bit more slippery as it okay. cools down. Okay, so. yeah, so they can't, they're not hooking up as well. Not hooking up as well, usually. Okay. But I've also seen some guys go real quick at the end of the day when it's a little dark and dreary like this. So what's the, what's the fast time of the day so far, do you know? I believe a 10.7, minute 10.7. 10. 10. 7. That'd be Shane Narbonne. Oh man, just missed the guy wheeling by here at 140 miles an hour. That was sick. He wheelied the whole way down. I, I don't know if the camera picked up the speed wobble. You see the speed wobble coming out of there? Unbelievable. Was, I don't know if the camera got that. I hope so. But I missed a wheelie, 140 mile an hour wheelie here. I didn't know you could. I didn't know a 600 would wheelie at that speed. Holy moly! So these are are these the same bikes they run at Moto America? Is the same same rolls pretty much? Yes. Yeah. Very similar. This is our our Neymar middleweight Grand Prix rule set that I think has been slightly modified to accommodate the 750s that they run in Moto America. Who's, who's lining up next, Rick? So this is kind of like the B group. <laughs> this, uh, same thing, loud and classic, 600 guys. Let's go take a look. But this is the second group. And because, you know, we're a little ahead of time here, you actually get the, the pre-grid. Awesome. On Upper Pit Road. Excellent. They're letting them go. are you going to have on the gate I mean, on the, on the uh, start? I think the cutoff is 42, either 38 or 42 riders. So I think we had 77 riders uh, entered in this race. So that's why we have the two 12 flying sessions and you're going to weed out the, you know, the bottom. I think it's 108% of the fastest lap time. So that'll weed some of them out. Yep. <clears throat> Shrink the group a little bit. So the final, the final cut will be the 38. Will that be made tomorrow, the final cut? Yes. I believe tomorrow morning. Practice tomorrow morning. The final qualifying so only tomorrow morning. the fastest morning. guys will be on the track. And as you mentioned earlier, the largest per single race purse in the history of motorcycle racing in the United States of America. A quarter million dollars up for grab. 55,000 to the winner. And I think if a local guy wins, you can actually knock that up to 65 grand. So that's a year's pay for, for a blue collar. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> uh, th that's $32.50 an hour for a year. Yes, sir. That's quite a purse. No, and there's a lot of talent here, and there's a lot of guys that want that money. <laughs> that's big money.
notice that one sounds a little different? That's an Aprilia 662 cylinder. Oh, wow. That's another one. They're kind of mixed in with the inline four cylinder 600s. That one shot flames out the exhaust. Rick, what kind of uh, fuel do they run in these bikes? Um, <laughs> most of these guys that you're seeing today are gonna have MR12, so that's a product from VP Fuels, MR12. It's like, a, I don't know, $40 a gallon, something like that, specialized race fuel that most of these bikes are tuned for. It smells amazing. NASCAR races here, do they run the whole track or do they just do the oval? When NASCAR's here, they're just running the oval. Is this a half, a half mile oval? Yeah, a half mile oval. The cars, the Little Legends cars, which I believe is somehow tied into NASCAR, they run the full road course like we do, and that's oh, wow. wild if anyone's ever seen that here. Yeah, that must be pretty cool. It's good to watch. Those guys get after it, what those little cars. Do they, what do they run for engines in those? Like, I don't actually know. It's some type of motorcycle engine, like a Kawasaki 900 or... They go good around here. Oh. 